will find you at one point or another anyway. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's, my, my name's Canty Smith. I'm Director of Education here at Telescience Museum, and we are so glad that you are here on this beautiful Wednesday afternoon. Our speaker today has many, many skills and talents. She is a, has a variety of, uh, back, of uh, professional careers and backgrounds. She was in technology and communications for quite some time, and she has been an educator, and we were very fortunate to have here, her here as not only as a teacher, but she's made the move into management, so to speak, because she is our general science program manager. And we were talking early on about, you know, I, I wanted her to do, uh, and by the way, how many of y'all saw Wendy's presentation on optical illusions? last year. Quite a few of you did. Excellent. So I asked her to do another Lunch and Learn for us again, and she came up with this very intriguing topic that I am especially looking forward to. So without any further ado, please welcome Wendy Hayes. There we go. Hi. How's everybody doing today? Thank you for joining me again, those of you that were here last year uh, for me, but thank you for joining us here at the Lunch and Learn. Uh, again, Canty asked me a while back and said, would you mind doing another one? And I said, okay, when? And she said, April, we have an open date in April. And I'm thinking, April, what can I do in April? What can I do in April? And the first thing that popped to mind, well, April, spring, uh, you've got Easter, you've got eggs. And, you know, eggs, of course, was the natural progression for all of that. I can see you guys down there. Hi. I'll move this. I'll move to the side every once in a while. So I thought, what a great topic because eggs are just so versatile. In fact, even now during this uh, spring season, you can't walk into any store, a box store, a grocery store, without seeing a big sale on eggs, whether they're raw eggs or hard already hard-boiled eggs. I walked down a, a store and was walking down the aisle to get my props here, and I saw already dyed eggs. Uh, you've got plastic eggs, you've got uh, chocolate eggs, my favorite. And uh, even like driving down the road, you may see signs on street corners that are advertising egg hunts uh, all over the place. So I thought eggs would be a kind of a, a good topic. But being a science museum, we have to talk about the science of eggs. But first, let's have a little bit of fun. Now, if you're looking to decorate your eggs, there's many ways to go about that. In fact, if you hit Pinterest, whew, you could stay there for days. Uh, but I just wanted to bring up a couple of my favorites. First one, we have a chalk egg that is decorated nicely with a base black coat and using a chalk pen. What I really like about this is if you make a mistake, it can easily erase it and start all over again. We also have the very decorative Pazansky eggs, or the Ukrainian eggs. And these type of eggs use a wax resist. So you're going to decorate it with the wax, put on your dye, scratch off some of the wax, put on more uh, coloring. In fact, one of our other managers here, uh, Carrie Cornwall, actually made this one that I have up here. And it is beautiful. Now, if you have a, a, an opportunity to get a closer look at it, you can see that using that wax resist actually puts a little bit of a sheen on it. It's kind of very shiny. Now, when you, I had this egg sitting up, and here's a good tip. Uh, Carrie wasn't sure how to keep it up, and she had a little flower pot on that, but the flower pot didn't work with it. So let me give you a little trick. If you put a little salt on the table, just like that, in a pile, and said, if you don't, it's going to fall over. But if you use a little salt, it will stand up just like that. Now, if you don't want the salt to show, you can blow the salt away. And it just takes maybe three or four little of the salt crystals that will hold that egg up just like that. Pretty cool trick, huh? Uh, I'm not going to blow the table, so don't worry about that. All right. Uh, we also have our dyed eggs. How many of you have dyed eggs? Yes, exactly. You've got the water and the little tablets or the vinegar, way back when, uh, and the tablets and that cute little bendable copper wire that never kept the egg. It just fell through anyway. Uh, so if you're dyeing eggs this year, you might want to try something different. It, there's a whole new slew of ways uh, to dye your eggs. 
Uh, if you like nature scenes, you can get out and get some, uh, some fern leaves or other types of leaves, different things from nature. The uh, newer the better or the uh, fresher the better. And wrap that up around your egg, put it in a nylon stocking that you don't use, intend to use, and wrap it up tightly. And then you can stick that into your dye. After about 24 hours, pull it out, unravel it, and you will see your outline of whatever you chose to do. Uh, you can make your own dyes. Uh, if you have some red cabbage, you can boil that, use it for a red. You've got uh, onions that would make a brown dye, and you have to be very careful with this one, but turmeric will make a yellow dye. Uh, so you can uh, take your chances with your own dyes. And also, if you have fabric, uh, an old scrap of fabric, you can wrap your uh, eggs in a fabric, wrap it up very tightly, tie it off, and soak it in vinegar. Once you're finished, you can undo your uh, egg creation, and hopefully it will look like your fabric print. Uh, another thing, I was walking down the aisle and saw this. Uh, these are the newest ones where you actually have these little dye packets, and you put your egg inside, and you kind of put the packets in, and you spin it. And it makes a great big spin art thing, which is pretty cool, and will be one of our door prizes. So you will get to have your very own little spin art for your eggs. All right. And then, of course, not only for just the uh, hard-boiled eggs, but eggs have become a work of art. Uh, we have the Setsumi egg, which they actually use gold. They paint it with gold and use raised embellishments to decorate that. And of course, we have the famed Fabergé eggs, encrusted in gold and jewels and worth too much money for me to actually have one. Uh, so which one is your favorite? Anybody have one? Yeah. Mine's still the chocolate egg. We like that. All right. So, uh, eggs in, in, through history and through cultures, uh, they represented new life or rebirth. The Romans actually used the eggs as a burial offering, hoping that during the rebirth there was a, a gift for them. And over 5,000 years ago, the people of China actually painted their eggs and decorated their eggs and gave them away as gifts during the springtime. In the Middle Ages, uh, the churches uh, actually forbid the eating of eggs and meat during the Lent season, which unfortunately caused a high abundance of eggs. So the people were like, what are we going to do with all of these eggs? So they cooked them. They decorated them, pens painted them, then had the church consecrate them. And during Easter, every table around had eggs on their uh, dinner table. Um, and eggs are also used as currency. Farmers use those eggs to pay their rent, used to trade or barter, or um, buy supplies. So it's kind of cool. And eggs, of course, today uh, we see them in foods, all sorts of foods. I mean, eggs are probably some of the main ingredients to the foods that you're cooking today. So let's get behind the science of eggs. Eggs are a great source of protein, and those proteins, let me get this, select my little viewfinder here, so you get a better picture of it. It'll work. There we go. Uh, those egg proteins are actually long chains of amino acids. And I don't know what happened to them, but I have some in here. So, now these long chains of amino acids are actually, the uh, egg white proteins are globular, which means these chains are folded and twisted, just like that. And they kind of move around, and they kind of have a weak bond that keeps them in that spherical shape, just like that. Now, these egg, protein, these egg proteins can change whether you heat them or you beat them or you mix them with other ingredients. And the changes happen here. So say, for example, you're heating your hard-boiled egg. So you have your amino acids, your proteins. They're all kind of there floating in the water, 
just like this. Now, as they get heated, they start to get agitated, and they bang into each other, and they start breaking apart uh, those uh, weak chains that were keeping them uh, curled up, so they start to uncurl. So here you have your chains uncurling, and they're still moving around and bumping into each other. And what's happening is they're creating a new chemical bond, a new stronger bond, uh, but not to themselves anymore, but to the other ones. And as it heats up more and more, the bonds get closer, and they actually take that watery substance that they were floating in before and encapsulating it. And the more you heat it, the more those uh, proteins start forming an intricate network of proteins all together until, again, encapsulating that water until it becomes your solid, just like that. Now, you have to be careful uh, because if you heat it too much, those bonds keep forming and you're going to get a very hard, rubbery egg that you don't want to eat. So, there we go. And that's for heating. Now, when you beat the eggs, you're actually incorporating air into your egg proteins. So, as you're beating them, the air are... Uh, let, me, let me go back to our amino acids again. So, there's various types of amino acid chains. Some are uh, water-loving or hydrophilic, and some are water fearing or they repel the water and those are hydrophobic. Now as you're beating the eggs and incorporating the air, the uh, water, the hydrophilic portion starts to go towards the watery base where the uh, hydrophobic amino acids are attracted to or get close up to the air. And what happens, again, it encapsulates that air bubble as they're banging together in the chains and they form that network encapsulating. Now, that network gets stronger, then you add the heat. Uh, the heat uh, expands those air, uh, air bubbles. Your uh, structure gets more solid and it won't collapse even after those air bubbles uh, burst, which is great, as you know, when making cakes and cupcakes to make sure they're nice and light and airy. Uh, the other thing is we all know that oil and water don't mix. But if you're making recipes, a lot of them uh, have oil-based liquids that have to mix with uh, water-based liquids. And how do you get them to, to come together? You know, if you, spin, if you uh, were to shake oil and water, the little oil droplets will all break apart. But eventually, they're going to coalesce and come back together again. So you need to add an emulsifier. And egg, the egg yolk, actually is a great emulsifier. What happens is you have, once again, the hydrophobic and hydrophilic amino acids. Uh, as you're um, beating them up, the hydrophilic attracts towards the water. The hydrophobic attracts towards the oil. Once again, you're mixing it up. It's creating that large network. And um, inside the yolk is also uh, lecithin, which is another emulsifier. Now, that's uh, like a fat molecule where the head of it is uh, hydrophilic or likes water, and the tail is hydrophobic. So what happens is the tail gets buried into the oil, and the head part sticks out cause, uh, toward, in reaching towards the water, and it causes a barrier so the oils don't uh, try to come together. There's the, that water barrier, and that helps with um, the emulsification of it. So, oh, let's go back to this. As I said, um, eggs help in a lot of uh, recipes. And here are just a few. Bread, batter foods, Caesar dressing, cream pies, fillings, puffs, crepes, waffles, custards, puddings, ice cream, eggnog, egg rolls, egg substitutes, foams, fizzes, lollipops, marshmallows. Oh, my goodness. Mayonnaise, pasta, sauces, souffles, soups, pots, maize, and, of course, we cannot forget wine. Hello, Mr. Dundee. Came in for the wine. And I haven't even mentioned any of the egg-based dishes. 
so we have our uh, eggs, and we're past the season. We've decorated, we've hard boiled, we've hunted, we found all of the eggs. Now, what do we do with them? Science. We use them for science. It's a great tool for science. So you open up your refrigerator, all ready to do your scientific experiment, and you look and you realize, I forgot to mark which ones were raw eggs and which ones were hard-boiled eggs. Ah, what do you do? I have a simple trick for you. As soon as I get it on the right thing. There we go. So, I have a dish here, and I'm using this dish because if they crack, I don't want it all over my table. So, I have two eggs. One is hard-boiled, and one is raw. Can you tell? Do you know which one? Do you know which one? No? Well, let's try it. So, I'm going <laughs> to... So, a quick trip trick is to take your eggs, and you can see it, and spin them. Now you notice one is kind of wobbling and one is spinning very fast. Which one is which? Which one do you think? Okay. Oh. I like your hypothesis. I like the fact that you backed that up. Very good. Anybody think anything the same, different? Same? Okay. Yes? What do you think? Same? All right. Well, actually, I like your process, and, you're, uh, and you were right on, but you just have to flip that over. The uh, raw egg is actually the one that wobbles, and that's because there's liquid inside of that that's sloshing up against the inside of it, causing it to go kind of all wishy-washy because we don't have any control. But your solid egg... Spin, oops, that wasn't the solid egg. There we go. The solid egg spins very quickly. Now, here we go for yours. Because it's a solid egg, I can just stop it, and it'll stop very quickly. With your raw egg, if you were to stop it, it still may wobble a little bit because you stopped the shell, but you haven't stopped the liquid inside or the eggs inside of it. So now that I have to make sure which one it is, now that we have our raw egg, what should we do with it? Crack it. Crack it. Yeah, I'm not going to crack it right now. But I am going to show you a really cool thing that we can do with it. So has anybody ever heard of a naked egg? No. Some have, yeah. Naked eggs. <laughs> Shamefully, they have lost their shell. So you're thinking, how in the world do you remove the shell from an egg without breaking the egg inside? Do you know how? No? Well, I'm going to show you. It's pretty cool. So first you need your raw egg. You've already tested. We know it's a raw egg. And a glass container. So you are going to pop that in there. There we go. And I forgot to do our egg challenge. But um, well, there's our rules there. All right. So we have our raw egg and our glass container. And then you're going to take some vinegar. Now, your raw egg, let me go back to my egg shell again. The, raw, the shell is actually made of a calcium carbonate, that shell. So we're going to put that in there. And then we're going to combine it with vinegar. Now, vinegar is 4% acidic acid and 96% water. So you're just going to fill up your egg or fill up your glass until it's just covering the egg. Now, I have a picture there. You can see the uh, bubbles starting to form. And what's happening is that carbon or that calcium carbonate is of <clears throat> having a reaction to the acetic acid, and it's crea creating a calcium acetate, carbon dioxide, and water. So I don't know if we can show this really quickly. Let's see if we'll show up. Do dump. Let's see if you can see it here. 
Maybe if I lift it up. Can you see it a little bit? You can see the, egg, the bubbles that are forming around the egg and kind of swirling around there. Now, those bubbles right there, that is all, those are bubbles of carbon dioxide. So, what you want to do is let it sit there for about 24 hours. And mm -hmm. after 24 hours, you want to rinse out or dump the uh, old vinegar and fill it back up again with new vinegar. Now, I have, and I want to get a little paper towel here. Can you tell? Excuse me here when I take a quick water break. Hmm. Okay, so I have one that I, oh, that did work very well, that I put in about three days ago. And can you see that? So it still has a little bit of the shell here because it hasn't completely done, but you can see where it's gone through on this one. And if I shine a light through it, you can see the egg yolk inside still in there. Can everybody see that? Yeah. Now, of course, with all experiments, I actually did this over a week ago. Had it in there, had this beautiful... Uh, egg that has lost its shell. It was just the membrane. In fact, here's a beautiful picture of it. There I am holding it up and you can see a uh, translucent. And I kind of, um, I don't even know what I did, but it broke. So the egg I was going to use today was no longer and I had to race home and start the process all over again. But what I want you to see is the egg membrane is right there. That's what was keeping the egg together. It didn't need the shell, it just had the inner and outer membrane. Now, if you look on the table that it's splattered all over, uh, you can see all of this. This is actually water. Now, remember I said that the vinegar was only 4% acidic acid and 96% water. Well, the eggshell and the membrane have little teeny tiny pores. And through osmosis, the water went from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. So that means the water from the vinegar went inside our egg. And you can see how much bigger that is than the original egg. Same, same size eggs. But you can see how much bigger that is and that's what you see up on the thing. So I'm going to leave this in there. Now, it takes about seven to 10 days for your egg to completely uh, remove its um, shell. So you have to have patience. And um, when I did this, again, when I, this is egg number three, by the way, because egg number two, after I called my son and said, you have to do this really quickly and get this set. Um, he had, you may have to use a spoon to keep it in place when it starts to um, float. Well, I don't know what happened, but the egg shifted, the spoon shifted, and it sliced it in half and broke inside. So this is eggy number three. So we're hoping we'll have um, better luck with this one. So there we go, eggy number three. Kind of see that he's floating in there. Just leave that spoon there. All right, so that is your naked egg. Pretty cool, huh? Now, once you make your naked egg, uh, or uh, know the process of making your naked egg, how many of you have ever blown out an egg? Okay, some of you have. All right, so what you're doing is you're taking your raw egg, you're gonna poke a little, little itty bitty hole in one end and a little bitty itty hole in the other end, and blow. Make sure you wash your eggs. And, and you uh, kind of get all of the insides out. Then you can also stick that in there and dissolve the egg. And what you're going to come up with is this beautiful egg right here that you can fold. Fold an egg? Fold an egg, just like that. Have you ever folded an egg before? Now, in order to puff it up, now this one has been sitting out all day, so it's kind of dried out. I've tried to put powder on it, it didn't work. But 
if you have a straw and you know where the end is, whoops, there it is, you can blow it back up again. There it is. Back to its little shape. Pretty cool. Yeah. So, another thing that you can do with your raw eggs uh, or with your egg shells after breakfast and you have some of your shells left over, don't throw them away. You can kind of rinse them off and sterilize them. Let me give you a quick hint on sterilizing the eggs. Uh, say you've cooked something, you've turned your oven off. So your oven is just kind of going back to its resting state. That's a perfect opportunity to take all your crushed up eggshells, put them on a uh, cookie pan, cake pan, whatever, and stick them in your oven for about 30 minutes. You don't need to turn your oven on or anything. Just reuse it, uh, your oven uh, right after you've baked something. And that should give a good um, sterilization to those eggs. Then you can take those crushed eggs shells and put them in your garden. It's a great fertilizer. The plants love the calcium that's in the shells. It helps to fortify uh, the cell wall of your plant. And if you happen to break one as nicely as this, uh, you can stick a little bit of soil, where am I here, inside. Don't forget to poke a hole in the bottom, put um, your seeds in there, and you can use it as your seed starter. Now, what's great about this is once your seedling is ready to plant into your garden, you just pop the whole thing in there, and it continues to uh, feed your plant all that good calcium. Now, one thing I want to show you with our egg. Have you ever noticed that uh, after you've hard boiled the egg, it's kind of flat on the bottom or there's like, it looks like there's a chunk missing out of the bottom? That's because inside your egg, and I'm gonna be able to hopefully show this to you, there's a little air pocket. Can you see that little air pocket right there? That little circle there? Yeah. Now the air pocket is created after the egg is, is laid, uh, the contents, after it's been laid, the contents start to cool down and condense and it leaves behind that little air pocket. Now it's good to know that um, the older the egg is, the larger that air pocket gets. So if you're wanting to know if your eggs are fresh or you need to think of something else to use them, go ahead and stick your eggs in a uh, bowl of water. If they, don't, if they sink to the bottom, those are the ones you want to eat. If they kind of float, you may want to think twice about when you went to the store last to uh, get those eggs. Okay. Oh, I'm back. All right. So those are all about the raw egg. What about the hard-boiled egg. What can we do with that? Well, these are fantastic pieces of scientific equipment. They're small, they're compact, they're strong. I mean, you could try to crush them. You've seen people try to walk on eggs. I'm not doing that today. Uh, these eggshells are very strong. So, if you decorate it very nicely, maybe give it some glasses and a cute little diaper. You can use it as your cute adoptive baby in health class. Uh, if you build some crates and different things, you can use it as a wonderful tool for your physics class. See what kind of contraptions. And of course, they're very small and compact. You don't have to build these elaborate things. Uh, but see what you can build and then drop it off to the highest point that you can to see if you can um, not crack your egg. Build a contraption that would protect your egg. Uh, but today, I am going to do something different. And of course, it is Mr. Dundee's birthday today. So I'm going to recycle, because I'm all about recycling, uh, his birthday candles. I'm also going to use an ordinary glass jar. Now you can have, a, if you have a milk jar or a juice jar, or if you have a flask. Unfortunately, my eggs were really small and they just kind of go through. But if you get the big extra large, you may want to use one of those. So, oh, 
Let me go ahead and put this back on again. Boo Thank you. And there you go. You can kind of see that flat piece right there. We're going to stick our egg there. And we're going to put in a few birthday candles and sing happy birthday to David Dundee. Are you ready, sir? No, we're not going to sing. We're not going to sing to you. We're, we'll spare you that one. Oh, I meant to do that. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right. So, first you're going to light your candles. Happy birthday to you. Then you're going to actually move the camera so it can be seen appropriately. There we go. Huh. Okay, so you're going to take your glass jar. Now, you want to heat the air molecules inside your jar a little bit first. And after they've been sufficiently heated, maybe 10 seconds, you're going to pop your egg right on top of your thing. Hello, come on. Now, what's going to happen? Can you see it? You've caused a partial vacuum. What's happening here is you have all of these um, heated up molecules. And these molecules, they are moving very, very fast, okay? And some escape out, which is why you kind of saw the egg kind of go a little bubbly at first. And then it blocks it. Now, as the, when the flame went out, those air molecules started to uh, cool down and start to condense. And of course, air wants to rush back in and fill that. So it caused a kind of a partial vacuum. And so this outside air actually literally pushed this egg right back into um, this jar just like that. Now, how do you get it out? Hmm, well, if we use the same principle in reverse, right? Well, let's think of it this way. How many of you have traveled on an airplane and you've got high altitude and your ears were just hurting you and you couldn't wait for them to pop, right? To equalize that pressure. So um, if you had anything, that, what did you do to make it pop? If it wasn't popping on its own, what did you do? Some yawn. Some did like this, some blue, right? Yeah, <laughs> chew gum, anything to, to change the pressure. <sighs> now, I made these eggs. I washed my jar. I'm not going to have anybody else do this. But if you want to do this at home, do it at your own peril. No, risk. But here we go. Whoop. There we go. So, by creating pressure behind it, it actually popped the egg right back out again. Hmm. And you have to like hard boiled eggs. So, there we go. Now, Another cool thing with hard-boiled eggs, uh, we already know how to remove the shell. If you have some more of those uh, crayons, the white crayons from dyeing your eggs and doing the resist, if you uh, draw a little picture on your egg and then stick it in the vinegar and allow it to um, uh, dissolve that egg shell, after about mm, seven days you can pull it out and your creation comes to life. And why do you think that happens? What do you think? I think it's because of air molecules. Very, very close. Very close. Now that wax resist, that wax that you had it was actually protecting uh, your eggshell, and so those those little uh, um, the acidic acid couldn't reach your shell. So it dissolved everything around it, and you have it. Uh, one other thing I wanted you to, I forgot to mention, uh, if you go home and try the naked egg one again, or if you do, excuse me, if you do a hard-boiled egg, 
Uh, we talked about the osmosis where the water actually filled uh, or, you know, in, um, went into your egg. As a homework project, if you're going to do something like that, try putting your egg in um, like a corn syrup or put it in water and see what happens. Okay. All right, uh, hard-boiled eggs. The next, of course, is um, my favorite. My favorite, plastic eggs. We, uh, we have lots of plastic eggs. They're great for holding uh, small objects like homemade slime. How many of you have made slime? and needed something. Now make sure you don't have the ones with the holes in it. Uh, you can also use them for great art projects. I have made a cute little glow bug and basically I just took my shell, turned on a little tea light, oops, turned on the tea light, there we go, popped it in just like that Decorate it with some googly eyes, or you can draw some eyes on, add some pipe cleaner, Chanel stem uh, legs. And I used d fancy duct tape for the wings, and I actually used the duct tape to hold on the antennae. So there we go. You can also use it uh, to make a scary spider. Uh. And for this one, I actually poked holes in the shell, so those pipe cleaners just go all the way through. And you can also use them for my favorite, holding chocolate treats. Now, I have some eggs down here in my basket that as you leave today, uh, everybody will have an opportunity to take one, and inside you find my favorite chocolate treat. Now, please ask your parents or whomever you're with uh, if you can eat the chocolate. I don't want anybody to come back and say, no, they were supposed to eat it. Uh, also, if you want to eat it now, you have to eat it in this room because we can't take any food or drink out into the museum because uh, critters like chocolate too, and we don't want them getting everything else. Uh, and or... Or, if you have the willpower, save them till you get home, because these are yours to keep. Now, uh, another thing that you can use the eggs for is for educational tools. Now, the uh, folks at National Agriculture in the Classroom has this wonderful kit that I am actually giving out today as a door prize. And it is an embryology kit. And the kit contains 21 plastic eggs. And inside those eggs, uh, details, like this is egg number nine. So inside the egg has a little picture of what's happening inside the egg, as well as what's occurring inside the egg. And so there's 21 of these that I am going to give out to you. Uh, the folks here, uh, it, I, I'll have this at the very end, um, but these are all free uh, kits or instructions. I actually made this one, but they give you the free instructions and all the templates that you can to make your own. So when you have those leftover plastic eggs, if you want to make your own kit, uh, you are more than welcome to. It's a, it's a fantastic resource, especially uh, if you're homeschooling or a teacher in a classroom and need some extra ideas. It's uh, wonderful. Once again, it's the national agriculture uh, in the classroom. So we have that. And I'm also going to give away our dino, a dining, spinning, dying egg. And before we finish off for the day, I do want to include one last item uh, to add a little nostalgia to our lecture for those of you that remember the following. All alone or in a crowd when you're feeling very proud or a fancy angel cake or a devil's lunch and break on a diet or in training for your weekend entertaining the classical edible egg. If you know a hundred different ways to prepare eggs, you don't know the half of it. Eggs are versatile, economical, highest quality protein. Don't run out. The incredible edible egg. 
All right. Thank you very much. So glad that you came out. Once again, those are the uh, websites of the two resources for eggs in the classroom. Uh, we'll go ahead and do our drawing. Absolutely. How about another quick round of applause for Wendy Hayes? So do we want to do the spinny first? Sure. Would you like to come up? And, uh, by the way, before we do this, is there anybody walked in late that needs a ticket? I need to know quickly. All right, looks like everybody's got a ticket. Okay, you want to, you get to tr choose the one out of here. You ready? Okay, draw one out. Did you not get one, there? This is for the spinning. Do you want to throw those two new ones in there and do it again? If they just got theirs. <laughs> I just wanted to be fair. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Everybody's in there, and the ticket number that is winning the spinning eye dying kit is ticket number 860. Those should be your last three digits 860. Who's our winner? Thank you very much. Very good. Awesome. All and right. now for the embryology kit, once again, this, go to the uh, website and you can make your own. And our winner for the embryology kit would be ticket number 864. Woohoo! Oh, how about that? Well placed. There you go. Again, thank you so much for coming out. Uh, please make sure that you grab an egg. And I just want to remind oh. everyone, if you have, uh, we've got some cards up oh. here. If you'd like to get a refrigerator card, mm -hmm. we have National Astronomy Day coming up on May 11th. And then we also have Rockfest coming up come first around. weekend in June, June 8th and 9th. And also thank you for your input for those of you who fill out our surveys. We really do appreciate your input. And that's it. So Miss Wendy's going to go to that door. I'm going to stand right over here. And anyone who would like a, a, oh, anyone who would like an egg, you may come and see us. And remember, they do have chocolate eggs in them. And if you'll wait and eat that outside the museum. There you go, dear. <laughs>